for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I would like to start by saying that I hope everyone is safe. Uh, my prayers are with you and I hope all your loved ones are safe. I request everyone to please mute yourselves and turn off the video. It will be a lot easier for you to hear our invited speaker, Mr. Abhinash Verma. So please keep your voice on mute and turn off your video. If you hide the non-video participants, you will be able to enjoy this seminar much more. There is a chat box in which you can ask questions. Uh, please rename yourself so it's easy to identify you during the Q&A. And if you have some headphones close by, please use headphones. It will make it a lot easier for you. My name is Sachin Agarwal. I'm from the Sriji group. Uh, we are hosting this event this afternoon. Established in 1976, Sriji has 43 years of experience in the sugar industry. We design, manufacture and supply turnkey raw sugar mills, refined sugar plants and ethanol plants. We are also very well known for our steam economy equipment. Sriji now has clients in 28 countries. About our speaker, Mr. Abhinash Verma, Director General of the Indian Sugar Mills Association. He's a familiar face to many people connected with the Indian sugar industry. In fact, he is our link to the government. Mr. Verma has been ably representing the Indian sugar industry to all stakeholders. He is frequently quoted in the leading newspapers. He can be seen on many news channels, superbly articulating the many challenges that are facing our industry. Not just in India, as the Director General of ISMA, Mr. Abhinash Verma represents our industry globally as well. He is the Director on the board of the Indian Sugar Exim Corporation. Mr. Verma is a veteran of the Indian sugar industry. Previously, he was director of sugar in the government of India, and he has in-depth knowledge of all the public policy issues related to it. Mr. Verma has a first-class master's degree in economics from JNU. Mr. Verma, very good afternoon to you. A warm welcome and thank you for joining us. I think, sir, you are on mute. Mr. Verma, if you can just unmute yourself, sir, a second. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, very warm welcome to you. And uh, sir, uh, can we just start by perhaps you can tell our audience a little bit about ISMA. What are the main, what is the main role of ISMA? Yes, uh, let me first uh, thank uh, Sachin uh, and his team uh, and Sriji group for organizing this webinar uh, along with so many people. I think I know only a handful of them. I saw the list yesterday. So good opportunity for me to interact with so many people and share my thoughts and share what exactly uh, we are doing as ISMA, as an individual with the government of India and on the policy issues. So uh, let me just uh, inform you about uh, the ISMA. Uh, there are two All India Associations in the country. One is ISMA, Indian Sugar Mills Association, and the other is our uh, friend, uh, that is the National Federation of Cooperative Sugar Mills. So two All India Sugar um, Associations uh, representing the sugar producers. Now the National Federation represents all the cooperative sugar mills in the country. ISMA represents the private as well as public sector sugar companies in the country. Uh, public sector may like, for example, we have HPCL biofuels in Bihar. Right. So um, it's an All India Association. And today mm -hmm. I think we have almost about 220, 225 uh, sugar factories across the country who are okay. our members. And uh, just for information of everybody, about 70% of the sugar produced in the country are in the private and public sector, and about 80% of the ethanol produced are in the private and public sector. So that's the uh, kind of representation that we are having from ISMA. Okay, that's great, sir. That's uh, just a perfect introduction. Uh, now, sir, the question on everybody's mind. Is the impact of COVID a short-term, one-year problem, or do you think there is going to be some permanent damage to our industry? Um, I wouldn't even say one-year problem. I would say it's a problem of around three to five months. Now, why do I say that? Unlike a lot of industries in the country, a lot of businesses in the country, I think the sugar industry is not as badly impacted 
Uh, firstly, a lot of industries were shut because of COVID-19 or the lockdown. We were not shut. And why we were not shut? Because sugarcane, sugar, or ethanol, which goes into blending with petrol, or the power that we generate are all essential commodities in the eyes of the government under the Essential Commodities Act. In fact, when on 23rd March, we had this sudden lockdown, we did face some initial problems in movement of some inputs on right. the in from Rajasthan or from Haryana into the other states. And that got immediately sorted out with the state governments, with the central government immediately intervening. So that is the support that we got. But yes, the lockdown has impacted us and has impacted us basically on our uh, demand front, both on the sugar side and a little bit on the ethanol side. On the sugar side, uh, from 23rd of March, obviously the demand started dipping uh, because mainly the, uh, you would be knowing about 60 to 65% of our sugar sales is taken by the industrial houses, the bulk consumers, the uh, sweet makers, uh, neighborhood sweet manufacturers, or say cafe coffee day or the coffee houses. So those were either shut or demand for those products were lower, mainly right. because people stopped going to restaurants, the restaurants were closed, uh, people stopped going to picture uh, movie halls or to malls where you have that extra sweet whenever you go there. And a lot of these uh, factories were shut and therefore that demand got hurt. So from 23rd of March onwards, we saw a dip in the demand. But from the end of April, again, we saw that the demand started coming back. Obviously, oh, not, to, obviously not to the normal levels. And uh, I was giving an example to somebody the other day that uh, I, I love my ice cream. So I was, I was waiting to have uh, the Baskin Robin ice cream and it was shut for almost one and a half months. But about three days back, they have opened their outlet in Delhi. Uh, why I'm giving you this example is we are seeing that the ice cream manufacturers are also back in business. They are producing ice cream. Uh, I have seen the Haldiram Bujiawala is also now sending uh, uh, sweets uh, delivered at home. So therefore, right. we are seeing that demand now coming back. Right. So, uh, but I feel that over the next uh, couple of months also, the demand will not be normal. The offtake right. will not be as much as we were expecting. So therefore, there everybody is guessing that we, there will be a demand destruction from, say, end of March to, say, uh, end of... Sorry, sir, just one second. One second, one second. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go so ahead. Uh, so we, we believe that uh, uh, our, our demand destruction would be anywhere around 12 uh, to 15 lakh tons in this season. Now, okay. now, to arrive at a number of consumption for this year, I need to also mention one important point. As compared to last year, we had sold almost 10 lakh tons more till end of February. So last okay. year, sugar sales was 255 lakh tons. So yeah. if the sales would have been normal from 255 lakh tons onwards, because that 10 lakh extra was sold, we should have sold about 265 lakh tons in the whole season. But as I okay. mentioned, there would be a demand destruction of 12 to 15 lakh tons. Therefore, I would believe we should be actually selling anywhere around 250 to 255 okay. lakh tons. Also because the pipeline today is very dry. I think almost all the traders would have exhausted whatever stocks that they had kept. All the large consumers would have exhausted whatever stocks they had kept. So when things start normalizing and businesses start coming back, there would be, I believe, a small spurt in demand. Sudden demand will come up, especially in during the Diwali or the Durga Puja or even the summer demand. So I would put our consumption numbers this year between 250 to 255 lakh tons. So there will be no growth over last year, but it will not be as bad as a lot of people are guessing or believing because of that extra sale that we did in yeah. February. Now, secondly, the other impact that we are having is on the ethanol sales. Now, we all know that the uh, cars and the scooters are not on the road or have not been so much on the road. So obviously, the demand for petrol was down. So and uh, people say that the demand for petrol was down by 50 to 60 percent. And therefore, ethanol obviously demand was also lower. But what happened was uh, the country's demand, the OMC's demand is to the tune of 10 percent blending across the country. So at 10%, okay. against 10%, we were only able to do about 5%. Right. 
So therefore, there were several depots in the country, in states like Jharkhand, Bengal, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Telangana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, uh, Himachal. All these places, we were either not supplying any ethanol or uh, much less than the requirement in those depots. So what we did with the OMCs was relocate our supplies from the depots which were full. Like for example, say Lucknow was full or Mughal Sarai was full. So we started, we, they reallocated, the OMCs were very fast, they reallocated our supplies and we are supplying to new depots now. To say Siliguri in Bengal or to, to Bukaro Steel City in uh, Jharkhand or uh, to Hazira in Gujarat. So therefore, the demand destruction in ethanol has not been so much. In fact, a lot of sugar companies are not even uh, talking about any demand destruction there. So ethanol, we have more or less managed to kind of uh, ensure that we don't lose much. But we'll have to see how things move from here. If things start normalizing, then I don't think there will be any hurt as far as ethanol supplies are concerned. So to just answer your question, I don't think that the disturbance or the harm to the or the hurt to the sugar industry would be beyond three to five months. I think, sir, that is sweet music uh, to uh, the 214 participants in this room because, you know, we are in such a gloom and doom sort of atmosphere. So it's very heartening to hear your thoughts on that. Um, so any thoughts on the price levels uh, that we are looking at? Uh, see, it's very difficult to put a number on the yes. price of sugar. But uh, yes, uh, just before the lockdown, I think most of us in the northern part of the country were selling sugar at about 33 and a half uh, at the mill gate. And in Maharashtra and southern part, they were selling at about 31 and a half, 32 rupees right. per kilo or 3200 or 3250 per quintal. Uh, that dropped. That dropped to around 3150 or even 3100 in some parts of the country because of the uh, lack of demand um, in the meanwhile. Now, the main issue that we need to remember is that the government of India now fixes a minimum price of sugar at which we have to sell sugar, below which we cannot sell sugar at our mill gate. Right. So therefore, the prices did not fall below 3100 at the mill gate. And that is why I believe that whatever is the minimum price of sugar, uh, it might be increased next year. We are already seeing a lot of news on that, a lot of articles coming. Niti Ayoga has also recommended That's for right. an increase in the minimum price of sugar. So if that happens, I would believe that our um, uh, sugar prices should be hovering just above uh, that minimum price of sugar. Next year's production is going to be good. And therefore, I don't see that the sugar prices next year will be running away. It should be just above uh, the minimum price of sugar. Okay. And uh, is there any impact on the acreage that you are expecting or? Uh, uh, really, are... really very early to say that, but I can, I can um, uh, respond to that by saying that in most parts of the country, the planting was almost over right. uh, by the time this lockdown started. Uh, and in some parts like Uttar Pradesh and Northern India, the planting was on. But since sugarcane is also an essential commodity and the villages had not got impacted, uh, today also they're not impacted as badly. Uh, therefore, I don't think the planting would have got so much impacted. But I put a rider to that. We need to do a survey sometime in June or July to okay. find out what is the correct impact. But I don't think there would be much impact on the sugarcane planting. Okay. And, uh, sir, are you expecting the new crushing season to start on time, like as per usual, or? Absolutely, I'm absolutely. I don't see any reason for us to believe that we will not start in October or November as usual, because as mentioned by the Honorable Prime Minister yesterday, on 18th or so, uh, the lockdown will be a different kind of lockdown with much more relaxation. We're already seeing a lot of relaxations happening across the country. I'm in Delhi where all the districts are red zone, but you can right. see a lot of traffic on the road. People are going right. to offices. So all those things are happening. So I don't see any reason to believe that the next year will not start in time, especially when the sugar cane availability is going to be higher than this year. Right. Uh, so if you can explain to our audience, and there are many people, there are many suppliers like us in the audience, what are some of the main things that ISMA is requesting from the government? What are the various reliefs that you are asking the government for? 
if you can explain that to our audience. Yes, let me explain that in two or three parts. Okay. Um, number one, as I mentioned, our there has been a demand uh, slowdown. Uh, the offtake has been lower. So obviously, our cash flows has been negatively impacted. So uh, the liquid, there is a liquidity problem and that liquidity problem is not typical of only sugar industry, but, but with almost all the industries. So to solve the liquidity problem, we have requested government two or three things. Number one is whatever payments are due from the governments to the industry as committed by them in terms of the subsidies, export okay. subsidy, buffer stock subsidy or the soft loan interest subvention or everything. So we did a calculation and we found out that despite a budgetary provision for the current season by the Ministry of Finance to the Food Ministry, there is still a gap of 8,200 crore. So we have requested if this 8,200 crore is immediately provided to the Food Ministry, then there will be no problem in settling our claims. So if right. that amount, whatever is due, because the government has to pay that today or tomorrow or by the end right. of the season, so if they can advance it. So the response that we have got is there is a procedure the parliament has to approve the budgetary allocation. Right. So I believe that uh, probably in July, they will get these budget sanctioned. That is number one. Number two, uh, if uh, the um, uh, members, uh, people who are listening, remember last year, the government of India gave us a soft loan in which a 7% interest subsidy was given to pay to the farmers. So that soft loan interest subsidy was only for a year, 7% interest subsidy for a year. That repayment has started from okay. March. So we have requested the government if that repayment could be postponed by one year to next year from next March 2021. And that 7% interest subsidy, which yeah. is amounting, which will not amount to more than about uh, 500 crore or so for one year, if that can be given, that will improve our liquidity. Then there are other things like uh, what the RBI has said is can we increase the drawing power of the uh, companies? Mm -hmm. RBI has said mm -hmm. that relook at the drawing power. So we have said that uh, sugar, against sugar, we have a drawing power of 85% and there is a 15% margin which is retained by the banks. Similarly for right. ethanol, I believe the uh, drawing power is 75%. So we have requested if the drawing power can be increased to 90% and the argument right. is very simple. The argument is that the banks do not have any risk because there is a minimum price or a fixed price for both for sugar and ethanol. And therefore, there is no downside if they give right. us a higher percentage. Right. So that is on the liquid right. and things like MCLR, the RBI has reduced it because repo rate has gone, gone down. So we have requested if that MCLR can be actually kicked in immediately instead of waiting for that one year period to get completed because MCLR uh, linked interest rates are reduced only once a year for each okay. company whenever that one year gets completed. So we have said that if somebody's one year com gets completed in November, it's too late for him to get the benefit because COVID-19 problem is today. So if that can be right. possible. So that is on the uh, side of uh, liquidity. Secondly, and very importantly, we have said that obviously some of us will be incurring higher expenditure because of that extra burden of uh, inventory or People will not be making profits because of various issues. So can the government can help us with reducing our expenditure and increasing or improving our revenue? So how do you okay. reduce our expenditure? We said, why doesn't the government keep the FRP of sugar cane the same for next season? If they can do that, okay. it's going to really uh, give a big, big uh, help uh, to the sugar industry. So I don't know politically whether that's right. going to be possible, but we have made that request that FRP can be retained. Second is we have requested if the minimum price of sugar, which is at 31 rupees, if that can be increased. There is a lot of talk that that can be increased. Niti Aayog has also recommended that it should be increased to 33 rupees. There is an argument there that the government did not include the interest burden and the depreciation to calculate the cost of production. So if that is included, the minimum okay. price of sugar can go up. So these are some of the requests that we have made. Thirdly, on the ethanol side, we have said yes. on the ethanol side, uh, it's very important to uh, help the sugar industry develop ethanol capacities because that is the long-term solution for all of us to balance the sugar production or reduce the surplus sugar. So a lot of sugar companies are not getting the loans. And I think this is an important message for all of you machinery manufacturers who are ma manufacturing machine for 
ethanol manufacturing. We have requested and we'll continue to request the government to find ways to help the slightly stressed balance sheets uh, to get loans from the banks. Because if I go as a standalone um, uh, investor, then right. I get the loan for my ethanol project because mm -hmm. ethanol projects are all very viable, pretty profitable, payback period is very good. But the moment it gets linked to my stressed sugar balance sheet, the banks kind right. of withdraw. So if the government right. can find some way, because now the government is even thinking of giving some government guarantees for MSME loans, etc. So can we examine right. that? So that is the other thing. We have also requested if the, uh, there can be some more encouragement on the ethanol price for B heavy molasses and the cane juices. So these are some of the requests that we are making before the government. Export side uh, relaxation, uh, reallocation of people who are not exporting. So if that can be. Right. In fact, which uh, you know, speaking of uh, what you just said about uh, being able to raise finance as a standalone project, but not being able to raise finance as soon as you know the banks say you are linked to the sugar industry, and we as various suppliers of the sugar industry, we also find that when we get our credit ratings done. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you know, there is a, there is a negative uh, sort of perception within the financial community about our sector. So any, any thoughts on this? Is Isma talking to the banks or the financial institutions about addressing this? Yes, we, we have been talking to the banks. In fact, um, just before the lockdown, we had a personal meeting with uh, the chairman SBI, who is also the right. chairman of Indian Bank Association very detailed discussions on uh, not only ethanol projects and then the one answer that he gave that if the government can intervene and give us a guarantee we will be willing to give you loans uh, there are talks about some banks not looking at the sugar industry and putting them in some kind of a negative list can we remove that that's right yeah. UP government has also yeah. taken it up with the uh, banks now yesterday the honorable prime minister stressed very much on self-reliance so right. that gives us a very, very, very um, uh, um, concrete kind of uh, roadmap that ethanol will be really pushed very strongly by the government. So right. uh, sugar, as you know, that we have become a net exporter of sugar into the international market for the last five years continuously. And we will continue to do so because I don't see structurally, structurally India reducing its surplus sugar production. So we are a net earner of uh, export, uh, sorry, right. foreign exchange. So that also should give governments that confidence. So we continue to be in uh, touch with the banks directly with IBA. Uh, during the lockdown also, our president personally spoke to the IBA uh, secretary, Mr. Uh, Sunil Mehta also for various issues. So we are uh, very actively pursuing these matters. Now, sir, one of the things that all of us who are in the sugar industry ecosystem that we keep reading about is the problem of arrears that the sugar mills face. So what is your sense of, you know, what is the size of the cash flow or the liquidity problem that the Indian sugar mills are facing right now? Do you have a rough estimate of... Uh, Back to the cane price areas, it kind of starts peaking from January and by the end of March or April, uh, it reaches its peak and then it starts, starts coming down. That, that you are aware is basically because we crush our sugar cane is about six to seven or eight, six, six, seven months, but we sell our sugar in 12 months. Now that we are producing, suddenly we were producing about 26, 26 and a half million tons on an average about three years back, but suddenly we have started producing 30, 33, 32 right. million tons. Right. And that right. seems to be the new mm -hmm. average unless there is a drought or a weather issue. So new average for India is 32, 33. Now, with that kind of production, our sugar sales, instead of about 12, 13 months of sale, that sugar which is produced in, 12, in six months, we are able to sell only in 18 months or 16 months. So therefore, there is a need of an increase in liquidity. Now, the banks are slightly reluctant in giving liquidity or the working capital loans to a lot of sugar companies. I don't want to name some of them, but some of them are very large ones. So if you look at, say, supposing, uh, because uh, Uttar Pradesh happens to be the largest contributor of the cane price areas, if you look at Uttar Pradesh's list of the uh, defaulters who are not paid cane prices, it will be about five or six sugar companies in Uttar Pradesh would be contributing for almost about 60, 70% of the 
cane price areas of Uttar Pradesh. So it's basically that sugar companies over the last about say seven, eight years have gone to a stress. They have become distressed accounts or NPAs. So we need to find ways to help these people specifically. Because supposing this soft loan was given by the government to help us to pay to the cane price of the farmers or the export subsidy or the buffer subsidy, right. these right. people, since they're not getting working capital, they're not able to take advantage of the buffer stock. Right. This is a vicious right. cycle. Right. It has to be broken somewhere. So what you're saying is, sir, the, for some reason, the most needy sugar mills are not able to take advantage of the various uh, subsidies or yes. the schemes that the government is introducing. Okay. Um, so the another question which is coming up frequently in the media is with these low oil prices, you know, and as we all know, as we just said a few minutes ago, ethanol is expected to be the savior of our industry. But uh, with these low oil prices, what are your thoughts on the blending program? Will the oil marketing companies continue to buy uh, ethanol from the sugar mills? Yeah, true. A very, very relevant question. Very important question. And I think over the last one and a half or two months, uh, I have got this question not only from journalists and uh, a lot of other people, but investors, a lot of mutual funds, uh, top mutual funds, top investors in the country, that what's going to happen to ethanol? What's Crystal or Ikra? They're also worried what's going to happen. Now, I have been answering them and I've been explaining to them that there is absolutely no bother as far as ethanol prices are concerned or offtake of ethanol is concerned uh, with the OMCs. Now, why do I say that? And I have given a lot of documents also, press releases of the government also, which confirms that the price of ethanol, which is fixed by the government, you know that the ethanol prices are fixed, uh, three or four prices are there depending on the raw material used. All these prices are fixed by the government as per a formula which has been approved by the cabinet of the country, the union cabinet. So that formula is obviously it's not in public domain, but that formula has two variables uh, as per which the ethanol prices are fixed. Number one variable is the sugarcane price, that is the FRP. And number two variable is the sugar price. And there is no third variable. It is not linked to the petrol prices in the country. It is not linked to the refinery transfer price. It is not linked to the crude oil price. Ethanol prices in India are linked only to FRP of sugarcane and the sugar prices. And these would only be uh, either higher or at a certain level. So therefore there is, even though the crude oil prices have dropped, it, doesn't, it has not made a difference. That is number one. And therefore we don't build think that the ethanol prices would reduce next year. In fact, it, it will only go up. That is number one. Number two, had there been any concern from the OMCs, if they were bothered, if they didn't want to pick up the ethanol, they would not have relocated or reallocated the depots to us. Mm -hmm. They would have simply said, okay, fine, mm -hmm. your contract with us was for X depot. I'm sorry, I'm not able to. And they would have used the force major clause and not taken that. That right. has not happened. In fact, uh, I believe that in the next uh, week or 10 days, there will be a third tender from the OMCs okay. to look for more ethanol supplies for, uh, from us at the current prices or the prices fixed by the government. So that gives us enough indication that despite all this, the OMCs are not withdrawing. The government is not st stepping back from this program. Very importantly, I worked in the government and I know that the government doesn't look at such small uh, problems to disturb a long-term scheme. Right. This is a long-term program and we know that it is something very, very close to the Honorable Prime Minister himself. Right. And he has been pushing this whole program. The Honorable uh, Petroleum Minister, uh, the Honorable Transport Minister, Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan, Mr. Nitin Gatkari, they have been very, very pos positive about this uh, program. So, and plus yesterday, if the Prime Minister is talking about self-reliance, I'm sure he will uh, not disturb this program. And in fact, I believe that for the next season, there will be more encouragement. Uh, you remember that the Honorable uh, Petroleum Minister has also announced that he's looking at taking ethanol from rice, the surplus rice, which is held by FCI. So there is absolutely no concern uh, which is coming up from the government. It's more uh, within ourselves that we are worried what's going to happen. Yeah, no, they, these are, uh, what shall we like, these are strange times, right? Like everywhere you 
to sort of look, which is why I think uh, this particular webinar is, uh, I'm already feeling a lot better and optimistic about our industry. And we have at least 200 participants. Um, so, uh, in fact, I have one question, which is that, as you know, today in our list of participants, there are a lot of sugar mills, which are your, you know, constituents. But there are also a lot of suppliers. Now, we know as suppliers, we know that if, the, if our customers are healthy, then we are healthy. So, how can we uh, help ISMA make sure that our voice reaches the government? Is there anything that we can do to, you know, as a unified front to make sure that our voices are carrying to the government? Because the health, if the sugar mill is healthy, sir, then only we suppliers are healthy. Anything we can do? Uh, I'm not sure whether you have a forum which can actually go and talk to the government. Uh, I mean, you can play a very, very big role as suppliers of ethanol uh, machinery or people who help us improve our efficiencies or reduce our, say, power consumption. So you have a big role there. I mean, without you, I don't think the sugar industry would perform so well or would have kind of taken up the challenges to produce 32, 33 million or improve our sugar recoveries. So I don't know whether you already have a forum right. which can actually take you to the government and uh, help you talk to the government. Uh, but if you want, you can send your uh, whatever uh, suggestions that you have or ideas that you have. And uh, ISMA can certainly convey this to the, those, those issues to the government. That these, these are coming from uh, a very, very important segment of the sugar sector. Okay. Uh, and uh, and, and some, some, somebody, some, some, a section on which we heavily rely on, on our efficiencies. So that, that can certainly help. Thank you. And uh, for the participants, uh, you know, frequently after these seminars end, I get a lot of suggestions. So, Mr. Varma has said, uh, you know, we can, you know, write to him. So, if you write to us, we will try our best to convey your suggestions to Mr. Varma. Um, sir, uh, what, how are the sugar mills preparing for the future? I know ethanol is, uh, you know, one aspect. Anything else uh, that the sugar mills have in mind that the next, uh, the future will bring so we can also prepare accordingly? Yes, I mean, uh, you've really got the most important point already, that is the ethanol side. And that is something, I mean, I, that is something very close to my heart. Because I remember the first cabinet note on ethanol was prepared by me when I was in the government in 2007. Okay. So see, I've been tracking this ethanol pricing, ethanol uh, program very closely since 2007 onwards. And we have achieved a lot in the last few years. And we very strongly believe that ethanol will be the solution for this industry to find that flexibility to control that surplus sugar and yet supply to the government of India. So that is one area that we can really work on and need to work on very well. Uh, it is very clear that because of lack of uh, capacity to produce ethanol, we are unable to utilize the opportunities provided by the government or the opportunities that we have because of surplus uh, sugar cane because there is no problem on the raw materials. We have surplus feedstock in the country, which right. we can immediately divert away from sugar into ethanol. There is no problem on the demand side. The OMCs are giving us a demand of 10% continuously, which can go up to 15% or 20%. The government of India has given a target of 20% ethanol blending by 2030. So we should be moving towards that. So demand is not a problem. Feedstock is not a problem. The pricing is very good. The government has uh, I mean, after about three, four years, we struggled, but the final government realized that and they have fixed multiple prices for ethanol. So ethanol is one side that ISMA has been very strongly following and we will continue to follow to ensure that more capacities get developed, more capacities can de get developed with across the country with other uh, sugar companies which are slightly weaker in the finances or the uh, balance sheet. Uh, because out of about 530 sugar mills which run in the country today, uh, only about, I would believe, less than 200 have capacities, 160 or 170 people. So there is enormous potential there. So ethanol is one important segment. The other is that we would certainly look at improving our efficiencies, where obviously uh, you all as, uh, as suppliers of uh, machinery or advisors to improve our efficiency that the uh, factory level are concerned. So that will be very, very uh, important because uh, we are looking at improving our sugar recoveries. We don't want to lose sugar in the processing. Right. 
Right. Um, there would be a lot of sugar companies who have achieved a certain level of efficiencies, but I believe about 60 to 70 percent still need to improve their efficiencies. They would be right. losing a lot of sugar unnecessarily, losing money, losing revenue. So that is another segment that we need to improve upon is improve efficiencies at the factory gate, uh, at the factory level. Right. Third is improve efficiencies at the farm level. Right. Now we know that we, uh, as ISMA, ISMA was at the forefront about seven, eight years back to identify uh, CO238 as a variety. And then we used to have regular meetings with our members, push them to take this uh, 238 along with a few other 118 and 119 also. And we saw the huge success that we got. Suddenly, say for example, Uttar Pradesh, which was producing about six, six and a half million tons, without any big increase in the acreage, now they are looking at producing 12 million tons, almost double. So that is the kind of thing that we can do if we improve our efficiencies at the farm level, get better cane varieties. ISMA is continuously interacting with all the agricultural universities, all the agricultural institutes across the country, including SBI Coimbra to, to identify newer and newer varieties and give better varieties to other regions of the country. For example, uh, Tamil Nadu continues to suffer very badly because their um, uh, cane varieties are pretty poor, old, and they are not getting recoveries beyond nine, nine and a half percent. Right. So they are suffering very badly. So that is one area that we concentrate very heavily upon, identify new cane varieties and kind of give it to the Okay. So, sir, I can see there are already roughly 75 like comments in the chat box and we have another maybe 15-20 minutes. Uh, is there anything else uh, you want to add, sir, before I take some questions or... Uh, no, perfectly fine. I think uh, okay. uh, any, any questions that I can take, I'll be happy. Okay. Um, I also know, I just, there are some, you know, I saw some of the names in the registered list. So I wanted to see if, say, Mr. Tamak is here and if he wants to share his quick thoughts while I just go over the questions. If Mr. Tamak uh, is here from DSCL, sir, are you in the meeting? If, would you like to share your thoughts? If you can unmute yourself. Or if uh, Professor Narendra Mohan is here, sir, while I just go over the questions in the chat, would you like to share your thoughts? Any quick questions? Professor Narendra Mohan, Mr. Tama. Uh, Dr. Sundaram, are you here from JPMA? Dr. Sundaram, if you are here from JPMA, okay, well. So let me, uh, Mr. Varma, just give me a minute while I, because there are so many questions I'm uh, trying to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mr. Vidang Pitti also I see in case he yeah. wants to say something. Yes. Sir, Mr. Pitti, Mr. Vedan Pitti from Harinagar. Sir, are you here? Would you like to share your thoughts? You can, uh, can we, Sudeep, can we unmute? Yeah, Mr. Yeah, I see you now. Mr. Pitti, go ahead, please, share your thoughts. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Agarwal, as well as Mr. Varma. Uh, Varma ji, I mean, we both have been in touch a lot, so I think you've covered most of the points, the issues which we as an industry or we as a factory, I think personally are facing because of this lockdown is, yes, you rightly mentioned about, uh, 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 you know, uh, improving our efficiencies. But the issue with the lockdown is that because, and especially we are, uh, you know, in Bombay. So uh, Bombay and Pune are facing acute uh, COVID-19 impacts. So our suppliers, which are there, which are specially located in Maharashtra, I think we are not being able to place orders with them, not because of the incompetencies or anything like that, but just in mere deliveries. Because everyone, as of now, what we see is that uh, they are uh, taking orders, but uh, the deliveries are very, very, uh, you know, subjective. Because we don't know the, as you rightly mentioned about self-reliance shown by the Prime Minister, but uh, Maharashtra is taking, and rightfully so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, 
uh, you know, go against what uh, the chief ministers are doing. But uh, we don't know exactly when the Maharashtra lockdown will finally come to a halt. Because uh, we, are, uh, like how you rightly mentioned, in Delhi, things are easing out. Whereas in Bombay and Pune, I can say that things are still as strict as what they were in the first lockdown. So that's only the concerning factor. Otherwise, I definitely feel that the sugar industry is not as badly affected as, uh, you know, the other industries. But this might be, uh, um, might have pushed us back by about four to five months just because of adding that extra efficiencies in our ethanol or our sugar plants just because of this. But I, all I can say in Bihar, where our sugar factory is there, we expect the same crop as this year, if not a 10% rise. But the main uh, jump will come from Maharashtra, I feel, next year. So I think that's the thing which we should watch out for. Uh, otherwise, I, I think you covered all the points very, very nicely. And I mean, I thank you for uh, uh, you know letting me participate in this. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pitti. Uh, we have one question. Uh, Mr. Verma, any uh, just thoughts? One second. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. I think Mr. Alok Sriram is also there, who's a very senior member from Dorala. Yes, of no? course, of course. And we have his comments because uh, I have to show respect to him. He's a very senior member. No, of from. course. Please, please, sir. Please feel free to invite uh, the stalwarts, you know, the senior people. Uh, sir, can you, uh, Mr. Alok, can you, sir, can you... Yeah. Unmute yourself and share your comments, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Alok Sri Ram, sir, kindly share your thoughts. Not there. He was just he was here a second ago. Sorry, I don't think uh, I was on mute. Um, no, I, I am a little new to the industry, so I'd like to hear my uh, much more experienced colleagues. All I can say is I think uh, the government has really supported us. It has been a rough ride in the last two to three months with the uh, industry being forced to perform and uh, all the lockdown conditionalities. I think the bigger challenge will us, will, for us will be, as another colleague mentioned, the um, issue of getting the off-season parts, spare parts, etc., etc., to be ready for the next season, which by the looks of it is also going to continue to be very tough. So um, I thank uh, ISMA for all their support and whatever they have done in uh, canvassing for uh, our industry. And uh, I also thank the government for all it has done to understand the plight of this industry. So we are in for a tough time, but I think we have a lot of well wishers out there. Is Mr. Chinnappan here from Dhanalakshmi, Tamil Nadu? I wanted to see if uh, we can get some uh, points of view from Tamil Nadu. Mr. Chinnappan from Dhanalakshmi, sir, are you here? If you'd like to share your thoughts. Uh, in the meantime, Mr. Varma, there is one question. Uh, what about the the payments for the power that sugar mills exports? Uh, any thoughts on that? Is that are there areas over there or? Yes, I mean there are large areas. I think almost all the state governments have not been paying the uh, power tariff to the sugar companies, and some places running into few thousand crores also. Now. Uh, as you're aware that electricity and power happen to be a state subject and totally controlled by the state governments. And therefore, these items are generally taken up by our associate um, uh, associations in the states, like UPSMA or SISMA in southern part or WISMA in Maharashtra. So there are power issues. And I think most of us have represented to the state governments that in these difficult times of COVID, if that payment could also be released. And, uh, you know, uh, we had Professor Narendra Mohan here two weeks ago and he was talking about dual pricing of sugar. Is that something which Isma has thought about, your views on that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> dual pricing of sugar uh, happens to be something that I remember Mr. Nitin Gadkari also very strongly pushing uh, for it uh, in the previous uh, five years that uh, the BJP government had. 
and uh, I personally did have a lot of discussions on the same with him. The problem, and we did try to work out various models. The problem is how do you implement dual pricing for sugar at your mill gate? Mm. How do we identify that person X or the buyer Y is from uh, the industrial sector or the bulk consumer or uh, the, uh, the, the uh, retailer or the wholesaler? Now, if you try and force that issue, obviously the bulk consumers or the industrial houses will stop buying directly from the sugar mills and then start buying from the secondary market. Now, somebody gave an example that when you, you, you can have a different power tariff uh, for the industrial houses and for the domestic users, right. why not here? Right. Now, that is really identifiable what power is going to, uh, to, to an industrial house and what power is going to a domestic uh, sub, uh, user. That right. is clearly identifiable and you have a meter for that. That is not available with the sugar uh, or any commodity for that matter. I have not heard of dual pricing at the mill gate. However, there can be models in which we can ask these uh, bulk consumers to voluntarily pay something more later on. But when you talk about dual pricing at the mill gate, I, we have tried to work around it for the last right. so many years, but, right. but it's simply out of question. It's not, not implementable. Right. Um, I wanted to invite and see if Mr. Ashok Agarwal is here from Anamika Sugar Mills. Sir, if you are here or Mr. Tamak is here, if they'd like to share their thoughts. Dr. Sundaram from JPMA. Mr. Satya Narayan from Kothari Sugars. Sir, if you are here and you'd like to share your thoughts. Uh, I have a hand up from Mr. Ajay yes. Kurkarni. Sorry. Yes, this is Satyanarayan. Yeah, uh, Mr. Satyanarayan, please, uh, from Kothari Sugars, please share your thoughts uh, with us. Uh, yes, sir. Very good afternoon to all. And a special thanks to Mr. Verma ji and Mr. Sajin ji for arranging this webinar. And here, as rightly told by Mr. Verma ji, see the recovery part, we are uh, not able to maintain above 9, 9.5. So if few of varieties can be developed, that will be a major help to southern part of India, definitely. Right. Yes. I mean, I mean, you would be aware that uh, we have had a few meetings in Tamil Nadu also. Yes, sir, yes, in sir. touch with, uh, in touch with you have also as Tamil Nadu Association, you mm -hmm. have also contacted SBI Coimbatore and uh, who better to help us than Dr. Bakshi Ram himself who has developed 238 for us in the country. Yes, sir. In so fact, speed bloom, speed bloom trials are going on and uh, uh, almost 20, 21 clones have been tested uh, in the past two years. And now yes. also around 17 clones are being tested in various locations. So if that comes in a right period, earlier uh, 11015 has been now almost in the path to clear. Uh, it's almost uh, surpassing the recovery of 86.032. So I think that variety now we are trying to uh, multi. Yes, yes, Mr. Satya. Uh, as ISMA also, I think we have shortlisted about five or six specific varieties for Tamil Nadu which we are trying to bring it on the field level. I'm not exactly aware what ex which uh, varieties at what stage, but I think we have brought it at the field level, know. some of four, four or five of them. There is a problem with this connection. Yeah, there is a, uh, there are a few questions, Mr. Varma, with regards to the W2, WTO dispute, is there anything you'd like to quickly comment on? Or uh, what exactly is the question? I mean, uh, we would appreciate Mr. Verma's thoughts around the ongoing WTO dispute around the financial assistance provided by the government of India to Indian farmers. To Indian farmers. Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, there are uh, two or three uh, uh, segments to the uh, issue uh, with the government of India supporting the sugar industry and the sugarcane farmers. One is very simple. That is 
can india as a developing country give export subsidy for its sugar exports so we have done our uh, homework we did a lot of research on that along with the legal experts and we established that till 2023 the wto rules very clearly provide developing countries like india to give direct export subsidy okay uh, obviously there are with some conditions of course and yes. having understood those conditions the government of india did announce the uh, export direct export subsidy internal transport ocean freight and marketing and promotion charges uh, to the tune of 10 and a half rupees per kilo which is the current uh, export subsidy on the sugar cane it's a very slightly difficult and a complicated kind of explanation uh, there there is a, there are there are experts in the government of india who advise the government on these aspects and they have explained and established that the current system of frp for sugar cane can be argued very well before the wto uh, we in isma believe that uh, the weakness before the wto would be more on the sugar cane pricing mm. not so much on the export subsidy but it is something that has to be tested current status in wto as we all know that after even if there is a decision taken at the wto panel which is pending as of now india has a chance to go back and appeal to the appellate body there unfortunately there is not a single judge today in the appellate body so therefore that appellate body is totally uh, non functional i don't think us is willing to even nominate one member to the wto appellate authority therefore even if there is an adverse judgment in the panel today or tomorrow whenever that happens india can go ahead and do whatever they want or any country can go ahead and do whatever. Okay, thank you. That was uh, very helpful. I want you to see if Mr. Gudagunti is there from Prabhu Lingeshwar Sugar, sir. Mr. Gudagunti, if you would like to share your thoughts, um, Mr. Muthu Velappan from Tamil Nadu, Mr. Muthu Velappan. I think uh, Mr. Pitti has his hand up again, sir. Uh, Mr. Pitti, would you like to share something? because i see a raised hand uh mr ajay kulkarni can you go uh, ahead and ask your yeah. question yeah sorry yeah uh, uh, good afternoon varma ji one just one question uh, you uh, um, mentioned a slew of measures which obviously is my taking up uh, is there any mention of buffer stock which needs to be extended or something on those lines are we discussing on that because somehow i think I, if i missed that out in your policy measures just one that, that's it thank you very much thank you sir thank you so you're right vedant 100% right that there are other measures than what we i have mentioned uh, when i was talking about the measures that we have already taken up with the government whatever steps that i mentioned that we have taken up is basically the short term ones to overcome the problems that we are facing because of covid 19 as far as the next year's uh, uh, financial assistance or Uh, government's policies are concerned including buffer stock subsidy export for next year uh, the price for ethanol for next year we have still not taken those up that that probably when the time comes when we when we finalize our sugar production numbers for the next season when we have a very good idea of our closing balance i think that will be the right time to talk to the government on those issues so i have specifically not mentioned about what we want from the government in the next season i've only talked about what we have asked from the government in the current situation under covid 19 thank you i want you to see mr kulkarni is here from uh, uh, yes from the ethanol industry mr Kul ajay kulkarni can you please ask a question please mr ajay kulkarni go ahead yes we can hear you yes i can hear you go ahead please while uh, you have assured us about the ethanol policy there are two points i just wanted to ask you mainly related to environmental clearances of the new expansions and new distilleries uh, presently what is happening is uh, as compared to the production plant uh, the etp plants are costing very huge to the industry 
and uh, this is uh, taking a uh, uh, lot of tolls uh, because of this uh, project's uh, financial uh, cost uh, almost uh, 40 50 percent is uh, in, uh, for ethanol plants 40 50 percent of the total project cost is spent on ethanol and the environmental clearances are also an issue because now we have another five six months for next seasons to start and is it possible for your organization to look into these aspects for the people who are planning to uh, start distillery in next season some uh, projects which are under environmental clearance discussions can you uh, push them be, uh, like uh, giving them some kind of uh, facility to put the environmental systems later on, strength system at later on, or ATP system at later on, and they can uh, emphasis on building the production plant. Can you do okay. something with uh, environmental okay. parent bodies? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kulkarni. So uh, let, let me respond to that. You have asked basically your question in three parts. Number one is cost of ETPs. Now, cost of ETPs, I don't think I can do anything about it because environmental issues are very important to the government or any society in the country or anywhere in the world. So uh, the government would like to ensure that we don't dispose of uh, something into the soil or into the water, water which is not treated. And if that is going to cost X amount, I don't know how we can really talk to the government to reduce that unless uh, people like Sachin Agarwal and all develop new technology to reduce those costs. So I don't know. So that is that is that I can't I can't ask the government to give up the ETPs that has to be there. Secondly, um, I'm sorry. With that regard, also if you really look at the pricing uh, that is given for ethanol, it is after considering all the costs. And I think the ETP cost is being considered while we are arriving at the ethanol uh, pricing. That is what we also did when we pursued with the government. Secondly, with regard to environment clearance, yes, the government has become very strict with regard to environment clearances. Now, uh, about 18 months, 20 months used to be taken to get that EC from uh, the um, uh, environment uh, ministry earlier. So we did take it up with the uh, Ministry of Petroleum, Ministry of Environment over the last, I think, uh, 18 to 20 months. We have been continuously pr uh, pursuing it, including with the prime minister's office. And therefore, we have seen a lot of changes there. Instead of 18 months, now I believe we are getting the environment clearances in 12 months also. Uh, a lot of procedures have been kind of streamlined, a lot of timelines have been reduced. Uh, now, as far as expansion cases are concerned, the government did give us a relaxation that for expansion cases, you don't need to do the public hearing, you know, don't need to do the public notice, etc. So therefore, there are some relaxations which are allowed for expansion cases. Thirdly, with regard to individual cases, if you have submitted a case to the Ministry of Environment, ISMA's office does mention it before the concerned people in Ministry of Environment about specific cases. So if you can let my office know, Mr. G.K. Thakur is the man in charge uh, who looks after the ethanol projects in ISMA. So if you can let him know uh, about your specific problem, about if there is any delay, he can certainly speak to the concerned people in Ministry of Environment. If required, I can also speak. Okay, so... We are at 1 p.m. And uh, so do you have time for one last thing? One absolutely yeah. last comment? And absolutely then we can no end. problem. Absolutely no problems. Okay. Uh, Mr. Natu, uh, Mr. Sunil Natu, you have your hand raised, sir. Can you uh, unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Mr. Sunil Natu. Yeah. I would like to thank uh, you and Mr. Verma who have this uh, session and so many participation. Two things I would like to, as, as long as the sugar price or the FRP or the other issues, I think ISMA is doing a great job. Two, three issues I would like to point out. Number one is the, for the immediate solution, we have been working with the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy that there are thousands of crores of pending SEDCL dues for power exports and they should be immediately paid because that will help the cash flows in the sugar industry. We have been working with Mr. Jagdade, Joint Secretary MNRE, who is very helpful. And I think with the new secretary, I think, uh, and with some association and assistance and pressure from ISMA, I think definitely these dues have to be paid immediately. Second important issue is there are 12 sugar factories 
in the earlier scheme they had applied for a capital subsidy including govind sugar and those have been rejected for absolutely unreasonable reasons by the ministry out of 24 12 they have agreed to process the application they are doing but the balance 12 also who have the expansionary category there is no iota of mention in the earlier scheme that expansion projects will not be supported and now they are not supporting those projects with some filmy reasons and in the new policy they have already given that expansion projects will be considered so earlier policy although it doesn't say anything they are not they are denying and now in the new policy they have put expansionary as a category preferred also so this anomaly has to be resolved number 3 i have written the comment also that post covid i think the sugar industry needs to follow the mantra of energy cost reduction and energy mix optimization who have been following up with the commissioner of sugar in maharashtra one thing is energy audits and implementation assistance and to reduce their steam and power consumption in sugar cogen and ethanol plants and thereby improve the availability of bagas so that they can extend the off season operation another important thing is with this energy savings and improved bagas availability they can use rdf and other biomass to extend their operations to at least 300 days plus which will be a very very viable solution third important thing is ethanol plants even if we consider the stored uh, uh, i mean vhv or stored juice the ethanol plants cannot go beyond 200 or uh, days so if they can be allowed and they can extend their operations with grain based stream added and now of course all the investment issues will have to be resolved but those can be resolved your comment on all this sir thank you thank you mr natu so if you want to quickly comment on yeah, mr natu uh, if you can send a small <clears throat> notes to my office about the problem that you are facing with mnri i don't no. think i'm personally aware hosakta mr thakur must be aware and he must be pursuing with mnri but i'm yeah. not totally aware of each and every item that you mentioned that you're facing with mnri so if you can send me one small note on that we will certainly sure. take it up with the uh, mnri people sure uh, on the various suggestions that you have you have given on improving the efficiencies etc and uh, the grain based attachment mm -hmm. these are pure commercial decision i don't think any sugar company Uh, is, uh, restricted. Restricted. So I don't think any sugar company is restricted from adopting any grain-based uh, distillation in the uh, sugar factory or in the distillery that they have. They can go ahead and do it. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, and the one I'm only going to take one last thing. I saw a hand by Mr. Walu Aher because that hand was up since a very long time. Mr. Walu Aher, are you still here? I saw your hand up since a very long time. Walu Aher. Uh, okay, I guess not, sir. Uh, thank you so much. We are at one ten. Uh, you know, we've gone over. But thank you very much. It was very helpful. And uh, certainly in this time of gloom and doom, uh, you know, you've given us, uh, you know, a lot of ray of hope. I would say so. Thank you for making the time. Thank you everybody for participating. Uh, you know, I, I'm very thankful to Mr. Varma. So thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to thank Sachin Agarwal and his team. Very well arranged. I think this is thank one you, of sir. the first interactions that I have had with. Uh, people from the sugar industry with whom i generally don't get a chance to interact with so good opportunity for me i hope i have been able to convey some of the ideas some of the issues some of the policy measures that we kind of pursue with the government of india and we continue to do that so any suggestions which you want to send to us from uh, your sector or your portion of the sector uh, from the machinery manufacturers or from any other uh, set of people i mean you can send it to us sachin can uh, be the uh, coordinating point since he has taken that lead and we will certainly take it up with him thank you once again to everybody who attended thanks to sachin once again thank you sir thank you mr varma thank you so much thank you everybody with this our session comes to an end thank you so much thanks for coming <laughs>